So good evening, members, and members of the public. Oh, hang on, press the button. Don't sorry, there we are. Good evening, members and members of the public, and welcome to this meeting of the council. I will ask my chaplain, Major Angela Strickland, to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. 
Father God, thank you for this dedicated group of people who have come together to serve the people of this borough. Thank you for your protection over our council, your guiding, guiding presence, and the provision to work towards common goals. As we begin our meeting, we declare that your purposes will prevail. Give us the wisdom to walk the path you've set before us. The Apostle Paul encourages us with this truth in Philippians 2.2. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Help us to be unified according to your word, Father, as we work together and commit to walk in grace, humility, and truth. As we are now in the midst of the holiday season, we recognize that people are suffering that we must remember that not all find joy in the holidays. There are still the hungry, the lonely, the hurting, and tonight we think of them. We ask, Father, that you provide for the needs of your people so they may feel the warmth of your love and peace. And I leave this group with the Christmas prayer written by Robert Louis Stevenson. Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus that we may share in the song of the angels the gladness of the shepherds and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Before we proceed, I'm sure that members will be aware of the recent deaths of two of our very eminent former members. Honorary Freeman and Honorary Alderman Dennis Barkway served this council for 30 years as a member for Hayes Ward, 1968 to 1998. Many of them, many of them as a leader and Honorary Alderman Anthony Wilkinson served the council for a total of 34 years as a member for Martins Hill and Town Ward and Copers Cope Ward, 1968 to 1994 and 1998 to 2006. I ask members to observe just a few minutes silence as we remember them, please. Thank you. As we proceed to our formal business, can I confirm that the meeting is being live streamed? Or I can confirm that the meeting is being live streamed. And I can remind members, please, to speak clearly into your microphones throughout the meeting to make it possible for others to hear the meeting as we go along. Thank you. So apologies of absence, item one. Um, the Director of Corporate Services. Who do we have, please? Madam Mayor, we have apologies from Councillors Jessica Arnold, David Cartwright, Graham Casey, Will Connolly, Aisha Cuthbert, Simon Forthrop, Sunil Gupta, Charles Joel, Andrew Lee, Will Rowlands, Diane Smith, Harry Stranger and Rebecca Whiffen. Madam Mayor, we also have apologies for lateness from Councillor Kevin Kennedy Brooks. Who's here? <laughs> Oh, Kevin. Thank you very much. Um, and declarations of interest. Item two is um, declarations of interest. Do members have any declarations to make in respect of tonight's business? No? OK, thank you. Um, item three is to sign the minutes of our meeting on the 10th of October 2022 as a correct record. Are the minutes of the last meeting agreed? Thank you. Item four 
is to deal with questions. We have one question for oral reply from a member of the public. The first two questions listed in the Blue Book have been withdrawn. All questions are in the agenda and have been put out in the gallery and do not need to be read out. The question is from Ms. Ju Owens to the portfolio holder for resources, commissioning and contract management. Would Ms. Owens please come forward to the chair in the middle there? Thank you and welcome. Please take a seat. Thank you. So um, to reply is Christopher Marlowe, Councillor Christopher Marlowe, please. Madam Mayor, if you could bear with me, please. I don't have the printed answer in front of me. I'm just pulling it up on my. Yes, of course. No problem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have it here. The council currently has £15 million invested with Qatar National Bank, with £5 million due to mature in June 2023 and a further £10 million maturing in December 23. The council's investment decisions are informed by its treasury management strategy, which is updated annually in line with guidance from our professional treasury management advisors. The strategy sets out appropriate counterparties on the basis of various risk parameters, including minimum credit ratings and limits. These parameters determined that Qatar National Bank was an appropriate counterparty for the council to invest funds with at the time that investments were made and that a favourable rate of return was available. Thank you. Ms Owen, do you have a supplementary question? Would you like to press the button? Right, left hand, right hand one. That's it. Thank you. From what you have responded that Bromley's decisions on where to invest council taxpayers' money is decided purely on a financial strategy and on the basis of return. Where is the line drawn? If the Bank of China offered Bromley Council a decent rate of return, would taxpayers' money be invested there, despite the well-documented human rights abuses of the Uyghur Muslims? Again, the council will make any investments first after considering whether it's compatible with the Treasury management strategy and the criteria set out therein. Thank you. Councillor Gilles, do you have a question? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you to the portfolio for the answer. Does the Treasury management strategy currently include any language around human rights or ESG, other ESG matters? <laughs> I do not believe it does, but I also do not recall any Labour members proposing that such language be added. Thank you very much. If you'd like to take your seat, could you turn the microphone off, please? Thank you very much. Uh, there are also six questions for written reply from the members of the public. The replies have been circulated and will be included in the minutes. We have received 13 questions from members of the Council for oral reply. We should be able to deal with all 13 questions in the 30 minutes available, but written replies will be sent for any questions that we do not have time for. So to go to question one is from Councillor Mark Smith to the Portfolio Holder for Resources, Commissioning and Contract Management and Councillor Marlow to reply, please. Thank you. Councillor Smith, Madam Mayor. With hybrid meetings, the numbers of people invited to join online are generally small and they can easily be monitored by officers. The main check is that the clerk for the meeting will monitor who is in the meeting and when a meeting moves into part two, they can request the chairman to pause until anyone not entitled mm. to remain leaves. If a member or officer has a conflict of interest, it is their responsibility to declare that interest and remove themselves from the meeting at the appropriate point. It is also the responsibility of members and officers who join online to ensure that they are in a suitable location where part two proceedings cannot be overheard or seen by third parties. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary question? Um, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I appreciate the um, portfolio, hold, portfolio holder's reply. Um, he and I were both at the um, ERC scrutiny committee on the 23rd of um, November. Um, when there were various issues regarding um, people attending the um, meeting remotely, particularly when the meeting went into part two. 
Um, given the, uh, the issues that came up at that meeting and the legal issues that arose and the legal problems we had, is this not, is this not something that perhaps should be reviewed maybe by the Constitution Working Party? Councillor Mallet, can I ask if you would stand, please? Because we normally stand to give answers. So I was just really Yes, Madam Mayor, I'll be going up and down rather a lot of Sorry. Case. Um <laughs> Councillor Smith, um, it is not for me to determine the agenda of the Constitutional Working Party, but I'm sure it's something they would consider. What I would say is if you have more specific concerns, then you can always raise them with um, Tasnim in her role as monitoring officer. Thank you. OK, we move to question two from Councillor Tony McPartland to the Portfolio Holder of Resources Commissioning and Contract. You are right up and down, aren't you? I'm awfully sorry. Um, Councillor Marlow to reply, please. Much of the portfolio is over 40 years old, and whilst smaller and regular works would have in part alleviated the position, we now find ourselves in the natural cycle in buildings in which any case would have required major works at significant expense to maintain their functionality. It is also worth pointing out that there have been numerous legislative changes to both building regulations and other areas, such as environmental requirements and access arrangements, which mean that the cost to bring the portfolio up to standard is prohibitive, whereas a combination of refurbishment and relocation provides the opportunity to address these issues at a lower cost to the London Borough of Bromley and its residents. Do you have a supplementary? Yes. Thank you for your answer. Appreciate you getting up and down quite a lot as well. Um, I understand this is quite a complex issue, but there does seem to be a bit of a pattern of neglect that has possibly led to this. I think it's also important to note that this is our operational property and not our investment property portfolio. So could I therefore get your commitment today that decisions around property disposals will not just be made on financial grounds, but also look at the social value properties provide? Thank you, Councillor McPartland. Whilst we do have a duty to consider all aspects of the buildings that we have in our care and those we choose to dispose of, we are um, quite, we do have statutory obligations to obtain best value for our residents when any disposals do take place. That's a statutory requirement. Councillor Geale, you wish to speak? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, could the portfolio holder possibly comment on whether the council makes repairs uh, when issues are reported in properties that arise and how quickly the council endeavours to make those repairs. Um, thank you, Councillor Gill. Um, I believe there's a process of preventative and um, reactive maintenance, but I couldn't give a more detailed answer than that um, at present. Thank you. Question three is from Councillor Josh King to the Portfolio Holder for Resources, Commissioning and Contract Management, Councillor Marlow. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The executive decision to market the halls is on the basis that it will be made clear in the marketing particulars that the council would welcome offers from those organisations who would ensure public access is maintained. However, once marketed, the council will also receive other offers for the asset. The outcome of the marketing exercise will then be reported to the executive. Councillor King. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Does the portfolio holder agree that the unsuccessful attempt to lease the building and require the leaseholder to repair the building was not the right approach and the council should have invested before maintenance costs um, increased greatly um, when there would have been the opportunity to apply for external funding, for example, lottery funding, as suggested by many residents? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor King. No, I do not. I support the decision taken at Executive with respect to this building. Councillor Ross, you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, are the respective portfolio holders aware of the demand for the halls by the community? I have personally been contacted by a dance school, a scent education provider and a church, all looking for regular space in the halls. I spoke to My Time just this Friday and they told me they are receiving inquiries for the site and are willing to continue operating the site as a community asset. I understand they have a 12 month contract and they'll be working for the next 12 months to build up the halls. I hope the council won't still be selling it off if the halls is doing well. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, the executive has agreed its approach. However, I would emphasise that we are open to all bidders of all different natures. Thank you. Councillor Tickner, you wish to speak? 
Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Is the portfolio holder aware that um, another council property that was disposed of a few years ago at 28 Beckenham Road, the former adult education centre, um, and for a while the studio, was disposed of um, requiring full repairs to this listed building, and indeed a buyer was found and has successfully renovated the building. Thank you, Councillor Tickner. I was not aware and I appreciate um, your perspective um, and I hope that we will be similarly successful. Thank you. Councillor Gill, you wish to speak? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, a very quick question. Is Beckenham Public Halls an asset of community value and how many other assets of community value uh, are within those the Council is currently looking at disposing of? Um, <laughs> thank you, Councillor Gill. I will give you a written response. Thank you. Question four is from Councillor Kevin Kennedy Brooks to the portfolio holder for adult care and health to be taken by the leader. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, uh, I am pleased to advise that Bromley Healthcare is making good progress. The regular ICB and council assurance meeting of Bromley Healthcare reports that their action plan is on track with many of the targets now achieved. CQC inspectors share this view and have reduced their engagement with Bromley Healthcare. Um, residents should also feel assured that the faults found by the CQC are far more concerned with business and assurance systems such as record keeping, um, audits and procedures for reporting death rather than the quality of their service to patients. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy Brooks, do you have a Supplementary. Yes, thank you. Um, apologies again for lateness, and uh, thank you, Chair, for your uh, as for leader. Sorry for your response. Um, uh, in absence, I would um, I would like to be reassured myself. Um, however, recently my dad came out of hospital into a package of care. He was due to have district nurses give him injections of the medication that he had. They failed to do so two days in a row. And these injections were to prevent clots, which could be life threatening. He also requested a special hospital cushion, which, uh, which he needed for his condition. This didn't arise. Luckily, I have a sister who is an HGP and who was able and legally be able to um, have these. However, the district, uh, Bromley Healthcare and the district nurses were not aware of this. Um, so they didn't do it because she was there. They, admit, um, they also, when we managed to track them down, uh, they'd missed it. His, urgent, uh, his referral was urgent. We were told, oh, problems are due to uh, staff and the communication between day and staff night is not what it should be. Bromley Healthcare fills its update with positive quotes, um, but this is from an extremely minimal feedback of about 5 to 7 percent of people. And so what so that positiveness that comes back that we we read and ingest and feel that that's that's everything is going fine. When you have a personal experience like this, it really feels different. So I want to know what action will portfolio holder or the leader in absence uh, take to ensure that Bromley Healthcare actually is improving at the rate it should be, so that other residents who may not have the support system like my dad did would be able to help them and not face threats to their lives. Madam Mayor, may I first of all um, hope that uh, Councillor Kennedy Brooks's father makes a full recovery and I'm sorry to hear about that. <clears throat> Clearly I can't comment on individual cases even, even if I knew them. Um, all, all I would say Madam Mayor is that the regular reports um, between the Council um, and CQC and ICB are making positive sounds around the improvement in Bromley Healthcare. What I would respectfully ask, suggest, is that uh, the Council's oversight and view of this process is controlled by the Health Overview Scrutiny, Scrutiny Subcommittee. And I think that's probably, if you wish to share the details as an example, a good place perhaps to pick it up. Um, Speaking more widely, Kevin, if I may, I think we've all had examples of where loved ones have gone into hospital, perhaps using a subsidiary 
such as healthcare, where we've perhaps left thinking, feeling slightly, oh, I'm not so sure about that. And if there is anything to be done, you should pursue it because that's the only way we, are, we will get improvements. Thank you. Uh, question number five is from Councillor Ruth McGregor, the Portfolio Holder for Resources, Commissioning and Contract Management. The Council leases numerous properties to small businesses. The revenue from such properties supports the delivery of council services across the borough. The tenants in such properties are therefore in occupation on commercial leases, which typically include provision that rents are reviewed at regular intervals to ensure the passing rent is in keeping with the open market, as the council has a fiduciary and statutory duty to ensure best value in relation to such matters. Rent reviews regrettably sometimes do take years to conclude, but it is standard practice that once rent is agreed, the uplift is backdated to the review renewal date as per the terms of the lease agreement. This is standard commercial practice. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary question? Yes, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I understand it's the commercial rents, but was any support offered to small businesses or charities that are renting property from the, from the council during the lockdown? Did they get any concessions on rent? Thank you, Councillor McGregor. I don't believe there is a council specific scheme, but the council did administer a huge volume of grants during COVID. In fact, it amounted to more than double the council's annual spending at one stage and small businesses were included in that. Thank you, Councillor Gio, you wish to speak? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, could I ask the portfolio holder, a number of council tenants have reported to me that the council has been seeking increases of 20% on their rent and also that they take on maintenance of the properties themselves. Um, could you explain how the council feels that this is justified, particularly in the current climate where many tenants are already seeing huge increases in energy bills? Thank you, Councillor Geel. Of course, I cannot comment on any individual negotiation um, as that would be against the interests of the Council um, and its residents. However, I'd be grateful if you could share written correspondence for these examples and I will take it up with our um, property department. Thank you. Councillor Kevin uh, Kennedy Brooks, you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, could I just ask um, I know I have, uh, there's a community centre in the ward I have, which I know the, the lease is, or the, not the lease, but the rent is coming up, um, uh, rent view is coming up. So it's, it's not been set yet. I know there hasn't been any correspondence between the council and the centre, but it will be in the next few months. Um, is it worth at this point for the centre to get in touch with yourselves to uh, try and see if you can get uh, a good deal on a rent because it carries out many, many services uh, voluntarily, um, which otherwise this council would have to carry out itself. So it would make financial sense in the long term. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy Brooks. Um, I urge you in this case to recommend that they contact um, Mike Watkins um, and Amy Milton in the property department for consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving to question six, Councillor Graham Casey doesn't appear to be here, and I don't think he's online either. Um, so he will be get, receiving a written response. Thank you. Uh, moving to question seven is from Councillor Julie Ireland to the portfolio holder for adult care and health uh, to be taken by the leader, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Madam Mayor, I fully agree that Bromley is exceptionally fortunate to have such an outstanding voluntary and community group network locally. We have repeatedly said so over many years as well, that the council should continue to support that network as generously as it can wherever possible. Do you have a supplementary question, Ms. Ireland? Oh, thank you for the answer, um, Councillor Smith. Um, I just want to know how the decision to sell off Community House shows that support for the voluntary sector. Uh, 14 charities and voluntary groups use the premises, including Bromley Well, Age UK, Citizens Advice, Deaf Plus and others. It played a vital role during the pandemic. It continues to do so during this unprecedented cost of living crisis. 
how does the leader show how does the leader's refusal to meet with organizations that um, form part of the trust that um, occupy um, community house how does that refusal match with his commitment and appreciation of the voluntary sector i gather that he's told the um, voluntary groups that they can move into the new um, hq when their lease runs out um, which is hardly um, what community house represents it's an open door for people of need and people willing to volunteer across the um, community <clears throat> Madam Mayor, first of all, I didn't refuse to meet organisations. I refused to meet an organisation in singular. And the reason for that was they were not the landlords that we hold the contract with to discuss the terms and conditions of the house. I also refused because certain people, uh, one of them in this chamber, uh, were spreading false scare stories that the council were going to do the dirty on the charities and leave them at the behest of a potential new owner and put them out on the street. And Madam Mayor, I made the point at the executive last week and Councillor Jill very kindly raised it, but nothing could be further the truth. Uh, and the people that spread stories like that cause a lot of upset, Councillor Ireland, and I would really encourage you to be more judicious in future. <clears throat> Regarding the future of the charities currently and the organisations, currently at Community House. They have a two and a half year protected lease at the same terms and conditions and rents, um, as I've been advised by Mr Watkins. After that, or even before, if they are released from their lease, they are very welcome to set up their, their new home, either at the council chamber, if we're still here, sorry, even at the Civic Centre, if we're still here, if the deal elsewhere fails, or at Community Lit or at Direct Life, which for those of you that haven't seen it, is a fantastically spacious place where any of the organisations um, will be able to do effectively much more, much more easily than they're actually doing at Community House at the moment, which isn't the most easily accessible building in Bromley. <clears throat> I can't say too much um, because I would be getting too close to the wind in terms of discussing conversations with uh, contract holders we have, with the leasees we hold. But the chief, and ex ex chief executive and I did meet with the current leaseholders of Community House during the summer when we were discussing perhaps their rent in the future, their future requirements in the future. We know there is a potential need for change there in terms of virtual working. All work patterns are changing. <coughs> And may nothing lasts forever in this world. Um, I'm sure Community House has been a, a loved home for those that have used it. Same is true for us here at Civic Centre, um, especially for the older amongst us. But time and necessity moves on. Um, it is part of a huge, huge effort to keep this council financially stable in four or five years' time. Even Bromley in four or five years' time on current projections runs out of money. We go bankrupt like others already have, unless we make some really, really difficult decisions. And this is one of them, because nobody wants to close down Community House. Who would? Um, but it's the right thing to do for the long-term future of this borough. And it's the right thing to do for the organisations that are in it. Even if some of them, and I know some actually are very keen at the proposal, because they've written to me to tell me now that they fully understand what is being proposed, I know that one or two don't, and I understand that as well. But this is what the transformation is all about. This is what dealing with local government in 2022 is all about. This is what avoiding bankruptcy ultimately is all about. And Madam Mayor, that's why I am uh, absolutely firmly in support of that scheme. Sorry as I am to upset a few people along the way. Thank you, Councillor Mark Smith. Just Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just one very quick question to the uh, leader. I do, do appreciate his detailed reply. Um, he mentioned a two and a half year protected lease. Could he just confirm when that two and a half year protection started from? I believe it starts from when notice is given. And I believe that will be scheduled for October. He said adding up two and a half years, 2025 on the current projections. And if I'm out on that date, I apologise. 
but it's two and a half years from when the notice is given. So that would 23, two and a half, that would be about October 25. Councillor Julie, do you wish to speak? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, could I ask the leader how much income the council receives from the rent at Community House a year? If I may, um, may I answer that question? I will certainly send you a written response first thing in the morning. Thank you. As you will note, we do have a couple of issues which will be in part one and part two. We need to be very strict on those because we have the general public viewing us tonight. Moving on to question eight. Um, it's from Councillor Elisa Igo to the leader of the council, Councillor Conor Smith, to reply. <coughs> Madam Mayor, um, I personally believe that we already do um, the button in question being advice and benefits. <clears throat> so personally, mm. I, I think the home page is fine as it is. <clears throat> I respectfully understand that Councillor Igo disagrees and I understand she's been in contact with Mr Rogers on the subject. <clears throat> My view on this is, is I'm easy either way. Um, I don't profess to be the world's firm, foremost authority on just about anything IT. Um, Web pages, home pages, um, to some extent, I don't mind. But I do believe, ultimately, that what we are doing at the moment is fully conversant with good practice and represents the interests of our borough and that they can find what they're looking for very easily. Also mindful that only 20% of people that access the council's website look at the home page. I'm told that 80% go directly to the meat, as it were, directly to what they're looking for so would potentially skirt around the home page anyway but as I say I'm happy with the home page happy with what it offers but ultimately if members decide between them they want to do other things with it well let, 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 have a discussion with the relevant committee and let, let's move on. Councillor Igo do you have a supplementary? I do thank you Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, Leader, for your answer. Um, actually, it's quite cheerful news because since we had uh, our discussions on email and uh, myself and um, Mr. Rogers, actually now there is a simpler click through to the warm places, which is fantastic. And thank you very much. Um, but uh, and also the link to Bromley Well wasn't working. It is now working, which is excellent. But I would say that other boroughs such as Lewisham, Southwark and Bexley have on their front page cost of living button. And I am wondering why we can just why would we not put it on the front page to make it so much easier for our residents? Thank you. Councillor Smith. As I say, Madam Mayor, I follow my advice from PR professionals. That's why we employ them. That <clears throat> They've explained, I think, on email to all of us. I'm not sure, certainly, certainly some of us have seen um, that they believe it works and why they believe it works. But... If, if there's a balance of view amongst members that they would like to see changes on it, um, I'm sure that can be accommodated. Thank you. Councillor Hitchens, you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm sure the Leader won't be surprised for me to stand up on a communications issue. Uh, and would it be possible for the analytics distributed around that area to make sure that the public are getting easy access into what they need? Councillor Smith? <laughs> prefer one on sport, frankly, Madam Mayor. <laughs> but, um, if ana analytics can be um, analysed and spread to members, that's fine by me as well. Thank you. OK, moving on to question nine is from Councillor Simon Geel to the por portfolio holder for transport, highways and road safety. Councillor Nicholas Bennett to reply, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. An initial investigation of this location by officers from the traffic team took place early in 2022. The possible improvements mentioned in their assessment were referred to about once the speed survey has been undertaken in the new year. Thank you. Councillor Geel, you wish a supplementary question? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and thank you to the portfolio holder for his reply and also for coming and visiting the site recently, um, along with a number, um, a number of other sites in the ward. Um, I requested a speed survey be conducted at the junction on the 23rd of January uh, this year, 
um, it is almost an entire year since I made the request. Could I ask why no speed survey has been conducted yet? I think the problem has been that we haven't had the money. Now we've had the LIP funding, we're in a position to actually advance some of the schemes. Councillor Vance, you wish to speak? Yes. Um, the building that was actually hit by these two vehicles is a listed building. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but the insurers are refusing to insure the building any further until some mitigation against vehicles ploughing into the building are carried out. So that needs to be soon because the building will not be insured. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bantz raised this with me on the ward visit, and I'm very keen to progress matters as soon as quickly. Thank you. OK, I have to inform you have two minutes left, so if you want to go through these ones at speed, we might manage it. OK, next question. Number 10 is from Councillor Jeremy Adams to the Portfolio Holder for Resources Commissioning and Contract Management. Councillor Marlow to reply, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A number of the assets identified for disposal are not subject to short term market influences. And whilst there is a degree of national economic uncertainty, land values have not currently been negatively impacted due to the combination of a lack of housing supply and market views as to the stabilisation of interest rates and build costs. The current disposal strategy is to market the properties in question and then report the outcome of that exercise to the executive. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary question? I do, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you very much, Councillor Muller, for the, the reply. I just wanted to follow up on your point about the characteristics, which mean that they're not subject to market fluctuations. I wondered if you could expand on that point as to what characteristics they are. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, I think we need to distinguish, first of all, between house prices and land prices. Um, rather than conflate them, which uh, some will want to do. Um, and just to emphasise that the executive has mandated to market these properties. Clearly, we are not going to dispose of any asset <laughs> less than what we feel to believe it's fair value, and we would not be able to under our statutory obligations in any case. Thank you. Councillor Bennett, would you take your microphone off, please? Thank you. No. Right. Uh, question, are we out of time? Okay, so um, I want to make a proposal that we continue with the rest of the questions because we can. We're on number eleven. We could do another three. We want to propose to go forward with that. Agreed. Okay, thank you. So, question eleven is from Councillor Chris Price to the Portfolio Holder for Transport, Highways and Road Safety, Councillor Nicholas Bennett, to reply. The Council has a programme to promote active travel and modal shift towards public transport where that is suitable for residents. This programme includes the introduction of walking and cycling facilities, improvements to bus routes and bus stops, and the promotion of walking to school through the development of good quality school travel plans. Bromley is also running an anti idling campaign outside schools and is rolling out a residential EV charging trial. Do you have a supplementary question? Yes, thank you. And thank you for your answer there and, and the actions you are taking. It will be great if Bromley can just push that a little bit further and ensure that active travel becomes something that is constantly talked about in the borough and into all policy policies that we are writing. I'm sure we all like to see as many people walking when it's a, an area which they can walk in rather than using cars. But also, should point out, we have a very good public transport system in Bromley, and we encourage people to use that as well. Councillor Hitchens, you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Will uh, the portfolio also agree that we should be encouraging the transport that we have got provided not to be cut? Our services have been challenged on some of our network rail at the moment, and some of our bus routes, um, I noticed during the snow period, they weren't even getting halfway to their destination before being turned around. And I talk about a certain area to the south of the borough. Uh, there are matters for TfL, Madam Chairman, uh, Madam Mayor, and I suggest he talks to the Councillor Fortune at the GLA. Councillor Ross, do you have a question? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Bennett, in 
In line with what you said about um, the council promoting active travel, do you think it was right that at the Development Control Committee it was agreed to remove the term active travel from the supplementary planning guidance? Thank you. I gather it's back in. Thank you. Question 12 is from Councillor Elisa Igo to the portfolio holder for Transport, Highways and Road Safety, Councillor Bennett, on your feet again, please. The panel last met in 2019 and the police had not attended for many years. Ward councillors were never members of these panels. The cost of running the panel in officer time and resources cannot be sustained when the council faces a growing budget deficit. Your recorded quote is inaccurate. What I said is that in addition to Fix My Street and the knowledge of our professional staff, I have 57 colleagues to notify me of any road safety problems in their wards. Councillor Igo. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, um, portfolio holder, for your answer. Um, I'm just wondering, at Environment, we saw on the Environment Portfolio Performance Monitoring Report that there were 106 KSIs in 2019 to 2020. Um, the target was actually 92. So it seems a little premature to get rid of the road safety panel. Um, it was quite a large panel. I appreciate that ward councillors were not on it. But um, if you are relying on us as ward councillors to report to you road safety issues, I mean, I have no professional qualifications in road safety. And I, I find that quite worrying that it's left to me to decide what is safe and what's not in Plasto. So can I ask you, is it really a good idea to disband this when, and also for 21-22, we have KSIs currently showing at 109. Thank you. Well, first of all, you can't take one year's KSIs in isolation. It happens to have a, a bulge this year, but as you know, it's been reducing over the years. Secondly, the committee hadn't met for three years and nobody had even noticed. The reality is, that the committee was made up of residents associations who were not experts any more than Council Igo in road safety. I have great confidence in my 57 colleagues that if there's a problem in any part of their ward on road safety matters, they will raise it with me. Thank you. And question 13 is from Councillor Simon Geel to the portfolio holder for renewal, recreation and housing. Councillor Yvonne Baird to reply, please. Thank you for your question. Um, we do not have a record of how many inquiries were rejected during the period of suspension. However, as a comparator, last year the Council completed 244 pre-applications, which generated an income of £146,128. <laughs> do have the figures for the last three years, but in the interest of time, I won't read them out. This year, up to the 30th of November 2022, 28 pre-applications have been completed and a further 36 are in progress. Income year to date is £75,750. Please note that major pre-application advice was never suspended and this makes up a large proportion of the income. With full reinstatement of the service for non-majors this week, it is likely that the full year 2022-23 income will be just over £110,000, which means a projected drop in, drop in income of somewhere between zero and 35000 compared to last year. Do you have a supplementary question? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you to the portfolio holder for the reply. And it is great to hear that the service is being reinstated. Would you agree with me that, as uh, Councillor Smith and others have said, in the current climate where the uh, Council is facing uh, huge cost pressures, that we should seek everything possible to avoid stopping income generating services? Um, and what action will be taken to ensure that we won't have to suspend this service again? Um, this, the, the issue uh, was a build up of applications during the COVID period. That backlog has now been ring fenced, is being tackled separately. Um, I can reassure you that all existing new applications that are coming in now are being dealt with within the target times. And it is hoped that the full backlog will have been cleared by very early in the new year. Um, so this was a very extraordinary set of circumstances. We don't expect that to happen again. And traditionally, we have always been within determination timescales. Councillor Igo, you wish to speak? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, 
Thank you, portfolio holder. Um, can I just ask, you said that some have been ring fenced. I've got residents who are waiting for, for word on their applications. Have they actually been told that there's a ring fence because they seem to have no communication at all at the moment? Thank you. Everyone would have an identified person, who uh, planner who is looking at them, so they can always make contact if they want to know what the status is. But if you've got a specific case, by all means, let me know, and I can make sure the right contacts are made. Thank you. Um, Eleven questions have been received from members requesting a written answer. The questions and the answers have been circulated and will be published in the minutes. We have one request for a statement. Statements should be no more than five minutes and can be followed by questions, not speeches. It says here in brackets very clearly. Overall, we are allowed 30 minutes for statements. The statement is requested by Councillor Simon Geel and um, Elisa Igo from the portfolio holder for renewal, recreation and housing on the rehousing of the Ukraine families initially under the Homes for Ukraine scheme. Councillor Baer, would you like to make your statement? Points for order, Madam Mayor. I, I didn't know there was a statement. I must declare I've got two Ukrainian refugees living with me. Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Anybody else wish to make a declaration? Mayor Councillor Kira Cuthbert? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I wish to make a similar declaration to Councillor Bennett. I'm involved with many Ukrainian families. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baer. <laughs> The microphones are working. Um, thank you to councillors Jill and Igo for your request for a statement on the status of Ukrainian families housed in the borough who have had to flee their homes due to the terrible war taking place in Ukraine. 582 Ukrainians have come to Bromley, including 205 children, under the Homes for Ukraine scheme, which the council has a close involvement with locally. And hundreds more have come as part of the family scheme. Officers have been in direct contact with all of our sponsoring residents and of those we have spoken to about their intentions, we were delighted that the vast majority, indeed 87%, were happy to continue hosting beyond the initial envisaged six month period. This is a testament to the extraordinary generosity of the people of Bromley and their willingness to help others in need is deeply appreciated. I am pleased to advise that sponsoring residents who are still accommodating guests, including rematches, on the 1st of January 2023 will receive a payment of £250 per household and a further payment of £250 is still sponsoring on the 31st of March 2023. Where host families have been unable to continue and Ukrainian families have consequently presented as homeless, we have done our best to find suitable alternative accommodation, either with another host or to assist them with finding their own private accommodation or by placing them in temporary accommodation in borough wherever possible. In addition, the Council continues to provide additional support to Ukrainian families by way of welcome packs of essentials and help with accessing schools, services and employment support for hosting families preparing their homes for guests with things such as providing stair gates for children and organising regular coffee mornings to give families and hosts an opportunity to come together. I should also like to take this opportunity to say a very special thank you to Councillor Kira Gabbard, who has worked tirelessly to provide a warm welcome to arriving Ukrainian families and assist officers in shaping the Council's offering it has been a huge benefit to have her language skills and cultural knowledge available. And her efforts are very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baird. Councillor Igo. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, portfolio holder. Um, could I ask a question? How do you, when you say you assist them, the ones that have come out of their sponsorship homes that can no longer stay there for whatever reasons. And I ask this because I've had a few families approach me and thank you to Councillor Gabbard for being very helpful, helping me with that. But I'm very curious as when you say to assist them, 
I'm being told that they're given um, or shown websites where they can look for um, rented properties. But of course, one of the problems is they don't have necessarily the deposits that perhaps you or I might have to put down on a property. And they're finding it extremely difficult or they are offered accommodation that is out of borough. And as a lot of them have small children, they will have to pull their children out of the school. And that is becoming quite stressful for them. Could you perhaps give me some advice on that? Thank The support offered is the same as it would be for any homeless family. So in the sense that with private, we will assist with deposits on private rented accommodation. If that's a, a route that seems an appropriate alternative solution for people. Our first port of call, though, is to rematch with another hosting family, if that can be arranged. But on some occasions, families have preferred their independence. And where that's the case, we will assist them. Councillor Jill, you wish to speak? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you to the portfolio holder for her statement. Um, I know you said no no statements uh, and comments, but I will just say um, I join the portfolio holder in thanking uh, Councillor Gabba. And, and I'd also like to say a huge thank you to the host families who have supported so many uh, Ukrainian refugees in their houses and done so much um, to, to, do, to help them in this time of need. Does the portfolio holder agree that with the war in, in Ukraine continuing, this is an area where we may see these uh, Ukrainian refugees needing to stay in the country for longer than may have been originally anticipated, um, and that the council will continue to do everything that it possibly can to ensure that they are accommodated and settled into the community, including providing accommodation in the borough where we possibly can do. Indeed, Ukrainians are still arriving because sadly the, the war is nowhere close to being over and, and uh, the country faces a very hard winter. Um, the scheme continues. We are still matching. As I understand it, the funding only applies to the end of this financial year. Um, we don't think it'll be all over by then by any means and we will be making representations to get that funding extended. Um, we certainly want to continue to extend the warm welcome that we have so far to um, the poor people who are suffering in the way they are in Ukraine. Thank you very much. Item six is to consider the report on Treasury management. Uh, Councillor Christopher Marlowe to move. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I move. Um, as I cannot reserve my right to speak, um, I will just make very brief remarks. Um, I think this report is a testament to the continuing efforts of our Director of Finance, Mr Turner, and his staff um, in finding new places to invest from mm. these surplus funds and the income from which, all of which, goes into funding public services, unlike in every other London borough, um, which is only increasing with rising interest rates. So I'm very happy to propose this report. Councillor Colin Smith, you wish to second? Madam Mayor, I do so second and would like to reserve my right to speak, please. Thank you. The item is now open for debate. Do members wish to speak? No. The, uh, OK, so Councillor Marlow, would you like to sum up? <laughs> I have no further comments, Madam Mayor. <laughs> I now put this motion to the vote. Those in favour? And those against? The motion is carried. More serious notes. Item seven is to consider the recommendation for the executive of the capital programme. Would members please note that there is a part two report on this subject later on the agenda. So please be careful to stick to the part one issues at this stage. I have specifically requested that we are live streamed today because of these issues. So I would ask for your respect to keep part one in part one. Otherwise, we will not be given this opportunity again. So part two stays in part two, please. So, Councillor Christopher Marlowe, would you like to move the recommendation? Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm very happy to move the recommendations. 
Um, and briefly, just to say, I would like to thank all, their, all the officers who've been involved in the Civic Centre Redevelopment Scheme. Don't worry, Madam Mayor, I won't go into detail, bearing in mind what you've just said, um, but I think it's important that we as a council, you know, we do take advantage of opportunities when they arise. And I think officers have been very nimble um, and have done exactly the right amount of work at the right amount of time in this case. So I'd like to thank them. Thank you. And Councillor Colin Smith to second. May I do so second and would like to reserve my right to speak, please and thank you. The item is now open for debate. Do any members wish to speak? Thank you, Councillor Park McPartland. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd just like to put forward the Labour Group's position on this. Um, taking into account the current situation regarding the poor state of the Civic Centre, we would be supportive of the principle of moving to a new, more sustainable premises. However, a new building is the best option only because the current one has been run down over many years. This is a bit of a familiar pattern, which we've spoken a little about already, and we'll hear more about later. Running council-owned property into the ground and then backing this council into a corner by telling it we have no option but to spend huge amounts of taxpayers' money on a new council HQ. And then seemingly being so proud of that, we call it Project Smith. We would like to put on record our support for the extra money for the depots. And as there is actually so much on the line, we genuinely wish Project Smith the best. However, no alternative sites have been presented. Very little time has been given for scrutiny. And as I've said, we should never have been in this position in the first place. So because of this, we as a group feel like we have no choice but to vote against these proposals. Who else have we got? We've got uh, Councillor um, Ireland would like to speak. <clears throat> I'd just like to put on record the Lib Dems view on this. Um, we're generally supportive of the um, depot improvement, although we have comments to make in part two on that. Um, we're generally supportive of the move um, from the Civic Centre, but we also have concerns about some of the costs, which we'll comment on in part two. Um, and um, so we're not going to um, object to this particular resolution. OK, in that case, we go back to Councillor... Oh, sorry, Councillor Smith. <coughs> Madam Mayor, I'm sure we'll have a much bigger discussion over this in part two. <coughs> would like to pick up on Councillor McPartland's reference to, um, as it were, running down the Civic Centre. I think it's fair to say we have known for some years now that we needed a new Civic Centre. I think it's fair to say... Um, that any organisation that doesn't sweat its assets to the max in a situation where you're potentially going to leave a building or a campus that's going to be demolished, it would be pretty bad business management. But I guess that's an opinion. <coughs> what I would say to Councillor McPartland and indeed others is I've been on this council for 22 years now. I don't ever remember once in budget amendments when we come to set council tax, the Labour group ever suggesting we should spend more money on maintaining council assets. I don't remember that. If it was once, that might be all it is. Um, I would remind colleagues that the money we haven't spent on maintenance has been spent supporting vital services to the boroughs most vulnerable. Um, all I would say is you didn't present, but those of you who weren't here might know, you didn't present a budget last year, um, an amendment budget. These are the sort of things really that we should have this discussion about there because it is really important. <clears throat> but this is fundamentally a business decision. Um, we can argue about how much we should or shouldn't have spent on maintenance. I think, Madam Mayor, the only thing I would like through you to pass to officers is could they please stop calling it Project Smith because... Uh, frankly, I find it a little bit embarrassing and I would prefer they didn't. Thank you. Councillor King, you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I do. Um, I'd like to correct uh, Councillor Smith. Um, Labour Group did on two occasions in previous alternative budgets propose that, um, that we spend extra 
on the maintenance of council owned buildings. Thank you. In that case, we return to Councillor Marlowe for his right to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first of all, um, in response to Councillor Ireland, um, I think she raised some important points about cost and naturally as a council, um, we appreciate any thoughts on cost control to maximise the amount of resources we have to spend on what our residents value. Um, and Med Madam Mayor, I think it's important that we note that the the Labour Group has tonight announced that they are opposed to the course of action which would leave the most resources available for the Council to spend on delivering public services, investing in things like leisure centres, and they're choosing to oppose that for political reasons. I think it's important that we all note that. Thank you. Thank you. I will now take this motion to the vote. Those in favour? And those against? Okay, that motion is carried. Okay, item eight is to note the report from the executive on the operational property review. Again, there is a part two to this report. Members must be careful not to reveal any part two information in this open part of the meeting. Councillor Christopher Marlowe, would you like to move the recommendation? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to move the recommendation. Um, I think we should all recognise the, the sheer extent of the, the work that has gone into this paper um, but by both officers and members. It really has been a root and branch review of the council's assets, which is something that we as a responsible local authority are obliged to do. Um, we are, you know, we are not spending our money, we are spending the public's money. And I think it's very important that we we are totally unsentimental in about looking to deliver the best possible services for the residents of the borough um, at the lowest possible cost. Um, and um, yes, I, I think much more detailed debate will have to wait until part two. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Colin Smith. Would you like to second? I did so second and would like to reserve my right to speak. Please and thank you. Thank you. The item is now open for debate. Do members wish to speak? Council Ireland. Thank you. Um, my colleagues are also going to speak about um, different aspects of this um, item. I'm going to return to Community House, if I may, um, and ask why the decision is having to be made so quickly. Um, I understand there isn't a buyer is going to go to public auction. I don't think that's confidential. Um, and um, I really feel that there, I don't understand, and it's not clear in the reports, why this has to be rushed through now. Why can we not give the voluntary organisations a chance to have meaningful discussions um, with officers and the executive to see if everybody can be brought along the same path? If, you know, you say that there are options and there are there is the possibility of um, consensus, then can this not be pursued? Um, rather than rush forward. I mean, we got the papers on Community House and other buildings a matter of days before ERC met to discuss it. So I think the public consultation has been woeful. And um, I, I really would appeal um, to you to, um, to reconsider the haste with which we're moving forward on Community House. Um, it is very emotional for a lot of people. You know, I've used Community House. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have. I mean, we've I've heard other opposition councillors say, you know, it's a conservative pattern. They run it down and sell it off. And it is, you know, that is quite upsetting to me, really, that um, that there's no consideration given to listening and consulting and taking along with you on this path. The um, voluntary groups that are so valuable to our community and who we all reach out to at different times in our life. I'd also like to ask. Um, one um, particularly um, alarming paragraph, it just kind of squeezed in the middle, is that you're asking for an additional £3 million to support the delivery of the operational estate strategy work streams. Um, I just find that a bit alarming that in one paragraph we've got £3 million, um, whereas you're told all the time that you're on the bridge of bankruptcy, you're rescuing us all from financial recklessness. Um, you know, if we ask for a 
slow down sign to be painted in the middle of a dangerous crossing. We're told it costs too much money. And yet in one paragraph, there's three million pounds just bundled up and, and spent. Um, and I just wonder, can we not have more scrutiny than this? Can we have more detail? Could we have officers' reports coming to us to explain um, what that three million is for? Are there any um, more cost-effective um, uh, options? Um, and is it completely transparent? I just don't understand why at this stage we're already committing such a huge amount of money, given your concern for um, financial responsibility. Thank you. Councillor Adams, you wish to speak? I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd just like to echo the sentiments of Councillor Marlow in congratulating those responsible for putting together this report um, and also putting it together with clarity because it's it's difficult for us lay people sometimes to be able to grasp the detail um, and this was a very well out very well laid out report i was also encouraged to hear councillor marlow speak refer to the um the council continuing to offer the best possible services at the lowest cost and the balance of, of quality and cost is one of the points i wish to make right now madam mayor um we as a group uh, would like to propose amendments to the recommendation um, there's nothing explicitly wrong with it, but we think there's a few points that we could add to it. And the first point um, is, is about recognising risk. Um, I've sat on the uh, risk uh, committee for a few months now, and one thing I do know is that the risk of being landed with a bill of £164 million pounds, um, for maintenance and refurbishment of property uh, was never mentioned. Of course, the number would never be mentioned, but the point about uh, maintenance risk um, we think that that is a key learning for this council uh, for the years going forward, um, and that should be noted here. Um, the second point is offering a clear assessment of the property market uh, for public assets that the council is facing in the disposal programme. Um, Councillor Marlowe did offer us a little bit of colour earlier on and the point about differentiating between land and property, but specifically there's a lot of analysis available about retail, but but the specific the specificity of the assets and so it'd be good to get some quality insights um, from uh, council officers into the market, which we're attempting to raise nearly 66 million pounds. Um, and that's a significant amount of money. I know it may not be a hard target, um, but what happens if we fall short? Um, so understanding the market environment we're selling into would be very helpful. Uh, and there's two other points that I think uh, that Councillor Jill might talk into. One is to fully consult on all impacted tenants and affected commission services. And the fifth is to carry out a full equality impact assessment. We think placing these things um, on the record um, is particularly important. And I'll just talk about quality because um, we do have in the report um, references to a lot of references to cost control. Um, and we're not suggesting for one minute that those are, are bad things. I and mean, there's a lot of references to efficiencies. But the word quality, the word quality um, does not emerge, is not there. And we would like the word quality, service quality and maintenance of service quality uh, to be explicitly committed to in this document. And having heard Councillor Marlowe's um, words at the, at the beginning of this item, um, hopefully that should be fairly straightforward. Thank you. Thank you. I believe Councillor Igo wish to speak. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just want to make a point on page 116. We've got Churchill Theatre. I think that's really, really sad that that has become so run down. I remember going to that Churchill Theatre, to the theatre there when it opened. Um, I actually did drama at school, so I went almost every every other fortnight when I was in secondary school and it really was the jewel in the crown for Bromley so it's incredibly disappointing to read that the asset is poor that obviously it's not being maintained and that at this stage further investigations are not being perused as the costs of doing so are considered prohibitive I actually find that very very sad right before we go any further we are just sorting out whether the amendment has been circulated and whether there's a point we need to clarify. Do you want me to send it?
Just send it in the iPad. Uh, Slight. Slight. Apologies, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm in, in terms of the formality here, um, unfortunately, I don't think we quite picked up that we were proposing the amendment at the time it was proposed. Um, so I'm just going to read the wording that uh, Councillor Adams um, has just outlined, and then what we, we're essentially discussing with officers is the correct formality of how to put it into the structure of the recommendation. Essentially, the wording that we're proposing to add is as Council Island, uh, sorry, Council Adams uh, outlined, recognise the risks of failing to maintain property in the risk register, offer a clear assessment of the property market for public assets that the council is facing in its disposal programme, explicitly commit to maintain high quality of council services in light of changes from the operational property review, fully consult all impacted tenants and affected commission services, and carry out a full equality impact assessment. I need someone to second that, please. I'm seconding it. Councillor Adams proposed it. We now debate that. I'm, I'm listening to my advice here. We now debate the amendment. And all vote. I believe I have a right to second and speak. Uh, and we have to then to move to the vote. Um, Councillor Adams has already outlined wording on the first uh, three points. So I'm focusing on here the lack of consultation that has been carried out um, and unfortunately when this item was presented to us for scrutiny at executive and resources um, I don't think any of us were really given the full context of what had and hadn't been done by officers and I think what has come out just in relation to community house is that the tenants and the the lease holder of the building not only weren't aware um, that this was being considered but they didn't find out about it even after the papers were published. Um, and one of their trustees found about, out about it by looking on the council's uh, executive papers. Um, and not only that, but they have been in discussions with the council. Uh, council Smith refers to two and a half years left on the lease. They had been in active discussions with the council about renewing that lease for another 25 years and had, had no reference to the fact that the council was considering this, the sale of the building. Um, nor have they had engagement since on, on that point. Um, and so the point is that at the time, uh, and the, the letter that was sent to us by the CEO of Institutes Bromley outlines their concerns and the lack of engagement that, that have been had with them, and also council officers who work with those services, because let's remember that many of, as a commissioning borough, the council commissions many of these service providers to provide public services, many of whom are housed in community house. Um, and yet council officers that were working with them didn't know that we were thinking about selling the building or what impact that would have on these services. Um, and so we have cons real concerns that this is just one of the properties that's been outlined. We also know that there are other properties that are currently empty where we know that the, the services are being looked at by officers um, and making decisions on disposals and um, what we're doing with the properties essentially negates options for services to continue uh, using those buildings because they're no longer available for public use. The second point, and it's related, is that in the report it said that there was no impact on vulnerable children and adults, and that was blatantly not correct. Uh, as I mentioned, and as has been mentioned by Council Ireland, many charities, including those supporting deaf, disabled, uh, elderly residents, and many others with protective characteristics, are using community house and the impact of the sale of that property on those services um, hasn't been considered as part of this report. Now, Councillor Smith has quite rightly outlined that the council remains committed to supporting those services, but that's not in the operational property review, nor is any reference made in the proposal for the future of Council HQ to moving charitable sector organisations into the new building. Now, it may well be that those, those proposals come to light, but at the point in time where this operational property review has been written, there doesn't seem to have been any consideration, either to consulting council staff in other teams where these services are being provided, or the organisations that are providing those services. And that really concerns us, because how can this council make decisions on its operational needs as a commissioning borough without consulting the commissioning providers and without consulting those that are using council buildings. Councillor Kennedy Brooks 
referred earlier to Melbourne Hall, the community centre, which is a council owned property. Now, it's not currently up for disposal. Um, but one of the things that we've been hearing is that the council, as I mentioned earlier, has been going to tenants and asking for 20 percent rent increases and for those tenants to agree that they will now be responsible to repairs to council owned properties to reduce the council's own liabilities. Now, that's not in this paper. There's no reference to it. And yet that seems to be going on. And there are very few community organisations who can cope with a 20 percent rent increase in the current climate particularly when they are facing huge increases in energy bills and other cost of living. They are also dealing with a huge increase in demand for their services. We've presented previously at this council on supporting food banks and wall spaces. Many of those are uh, provided by community organisations. Many of those community organisations use council-owned buildings in order to provide the services, including Community House, which currently has a wall space operating. If the costs of those increases has to be passed on to those charities. Some of them are going to fold. Others are going to have to drastically reduce the amount of support they can offer residents. And nowhere in this operational property review has any of this been taken into account. The social value of these buildings is important. And just as the council needs to generate income from the sale and disposal to support the repair and refurbishments of the other buildings, we feel is it is vitally important that those services that are supporting so many residents across our borough need to be considered and we need to have a plan for how these services continue and maybe it is that they move into the council's new offices maybe it isn't but this operation property review doesn't cover any of those points and it almost seems to have been an afterthought or not even that and so we in the labor group are proposing this amendment so that we can ensure that these considerations have been fully considered. And maybe it won't affect any of the decisions that are being made, but we are asking the Conservative group to add in, in these factors to ensure that residents can get, as Councillor Marlow said, confidence that we are offering the highest quality service at the lowest possible cost. Thank you. Uh, would any other members like to speak on the amendment? <laughs> Councillor Techner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, <clears throat> no one values our voluntary organisations more than we on this side of the chamber. And uh, it is the voluntary organisations themselves that have the social value, not the building of Community House. And there may be sentimental reasons why uh, there's concern about it, but I think it would be far better to welcome the voluntary organisations into the same building as the council so that we are working closer together rather than having uh, the community house organisations stuck out on a bit of a satellite at community house. Far better to bring it all together. And Councillor Jill um, says uh, these things are keeping him in the dark, but as, as far as I know, it's quite normal with property negotiations that um, these things carry on without uh, everyone being informed of everything all the way along the line. In fact, in terms of keeping people in the dark, we've just, uh, we, we're all being kept in the dark because we've been presented with a long and complex amendment that we haven't got sight of and we haven't got in front of us. So, in fact, it's Councillor Jill that's keeping us in the dark. Councillor Ireland, would you like to speak? I just wanted to ask, could the amendment be read out again, please? Would you like to read the amendment again? Uh, we're currently in the process of trying to email the text to officers, so perhaps we could perhaps we could read it out again before we take the vote. Councillor Kevin Brooks, Kevin Kennedy Brooks, apologies. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> um, and just really to reply to Councillor Tickner's point. Um, I have no doubt that members on the other side, um, you know, as part of even being a councillor, um, has extremely good intentions and wants to support the local community, et cetera, et cetera. But what we our amendment is really showing that in the paper itself, there is a commitment because it's OK us talking about it here. But I think it's really important in the paper itself um, for for the public to feel really um, 
really assured that there is a, a public written commitment that we can have. And I think just to impress upon the others, that's simply what we're asking. For. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I agree um, with the Labour group about consultation. I'm pro consultation as much as possible. But I just wanted to bring this to attention of everyone and wondered if people were aware of the good law project and they've currently got um, a case going to the Supreme Court regarding the sale of green space in Shropshire, help stop the British public space sell off. If they win this case, that will impact all public land and perhaps buildings being sold off by councils without consultation. Just wanted to draw that to everyone's attention. Thank you. Do any other, any other members wish to speak? OK, Councillor Marlowe, would you like to speak? Madam Mayor, may I speak once the Labour group has decided what their amendments are and have they been read out? Thank you. Councillor Smith, would you like to speak? Madam Mayor, I want to move this matter on because, to be brutally honest, we're not going to support the amendment. Um, <clears throat> I do take the genuine, heartfelt desire to see something in writing. I do believe your sincerity on that. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, what I'm quite prepared to put my name to, that will offer some succour to you, I hope, <clears throat> is that no single current user of Community House will be financially burdened by a move or will have worse office accommodation than they currently have. Indeed, although inflation will inevitably move up whatever their new rates are over time, in real terms, uh, that is frankly my pledge to this council. No single current subleasee at Community House will be worse off financially or in terms of the office facilities they would enjoy at the new accommodation and that obviously needs to go in the minutes because uh, we won't be supporting the amendment because there really is nothing to worry about i promise councillor price you wish to speak yes just to say thank you very much for that um i'm someone who works in the voluntary sector sometimes it is not appropriate for voluntary sector organizations to be based in the same building as the council, because some of the issues people might have is about the council. And therefore, what people need to do is go to somewhere where they feel safe. As great as the council is at supporting people, the place of where people actually receive that support isn't always best in the council building. So the support that you have just offered to all of the services there, if that is in a non-council building or not in the same building as the council, will that also be there for them? Councillor Smith. Madam Mayor, I can't make policy up on the hoof. Um, but what I would say is of some of the subleases I've spoken to, they're very, very engaged at the thought of moving in with the council at our new premises, or potentially even civic if we get stuck here. <clears throat> Obviously, if anybody wanted an independent place, there's always the ability to try and source it themselves. <clears throat> Come back to the fundamental point I made earlier uh, in the meeting. <clears throat> this council is scheduled to go bankrupt in four to five years time unless we make hard decisions. <clears throat> and hard decisions involve selling buildings when we don't necessarily want to. Who wants to sell community house? Not me. Um, it involves making very, very tough financial choices. That's why we're here tonight, and that's why it's on the paper. <clears throat> and giving someone another building is a building, frankly, why would we have another building? The whole object is to come centrally, is to increase what we do along with our residents, along with their supporters, along with our charities, our help groups, our volunteers. <clears throat> that's part of the big vision, whether you share it or not, of course, is another matter. Um, I think we all share the big vision, perhaps a slightly different way of getting there. Um, but that's why it is as it is, and that is why we are, with apologies and um, genuine sincerity, not going to accept the amendment. Um, we're ready to move to the vote on that. Thank you. I'm now going to ask for Councillor McParland to read out the amendment. 
the motion. Oh, Councillor Adams, good. Oh, Adams, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes. Madam Mayor. We'll we are next I'm going to sack the, the CEO um, here. Sorry, of course I know. Just with a yes, note of thanks to uh, Councillor Smith for recognising the spirit in which we, we brought these to be constructive and, and forward looking as well um, in the matter for the purposes of formality. Um, and apologies for not having circulated this in advance. I'm going to go through the, 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 uh, yeah. the items now, just in case. House of Smith's interested in any of the other items as well. Um, so we're suggesting adding at the end of recommendations to the text on the front page, um, subject to the following. One, recognising the risks of failing to maintain property in the risk register. Two, offering a clear assessment of the property market for public assets that the council is facing in its disposal programme. Three, explicitly committing to maintaining high quality of council services in light of changes from the operational property review. Four, fully consulting all impacted tenants and affected commissioned services. Finally, carrying out a full equality impact assessment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Marlow, would you like to speak now it's been read out? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll keep it brief. I would also like to urge members to vote against these amendments. Um, this is more on a point by point basis. Um, Councillor Adams raised the, raises the issue of the risk register. If additional items are to be included into risk register, the place to raise that is that the ERC PDS, um, not a full council, and take it through the, the regular process. Um, with regards to the comments on the property market, we employ professional officers with significant private and public sector experience to advise us on these matters. And in a previous item, we've set out how the council will procure additional resources, bearing in mind the sheer scope of this work. So that is also covered. Um, and the last comment about equality impact assessments. Um, Madam Mayor, the worst thing that could impact disadvantaged groups is if the council loses its grip on its finances and then has to make unplanned and unscheduled reductions in services, which many councils, which have not been managed properly over the long term, um, are having to do. Um, and also, Madam Mayor, I just like to say I think it's a shame that um, Councillor Geel chose to echo the scurrilous misinformation from Councillor Ireland, which has created a lot of disquiet amongst organisations serving the most vulnerable people in this borough. And if you think the way to serve our vulnerable residents is to spread misinformation, you're very wrong indeed. Thank you. Point of order, please. Point of order, Madam Mayor. I, uh, I'd like to object to the suggestion that I've echoed scurrilous allegations or of any sort. Um, I have raised what to me are genuinely uh, founded concerns raised directly by charity groups and others concerned parties. Um, I am not clear what exactly what Councillor Marlowe feels are scurrilous accusations, but I would ask that he withdraw the comment in relation to the word, the speech that I gave. It appears not. Oh, Councillor Ireland. Can I echo that? I haven't made any scurrilous allegations of concern. I've, I've met with representatives of different groups. I've had a correspondence from um, the um, lessees and the community links Bromley uh, talk to the chief executive. Um, all I've done is I've, I've provided an echo chamber to echo concerns from people who wanted to be consulted. I haven't cast any scurrilous information and I too would like that withdrawn. Councillor Weber. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to support Councillor Arnold um, and to, to ask further about these allegations. Um, I, I don't agree with what's been said by colleagues on the other side. Uh, and as I understand it, the our record of our party in supporting Community House goes back a number of years and a former mayor, former councillor David Crow, was involved with setting up Community House in the 1990s, I believe, uh, when, when he was councillor. And I think we, we, we're within our rights to support the organisations that have these very valid concerns. And I did just briefly want to echo uh, what Councillor Igo said about the Churchill Theatre, which is mentioned in this report. We, we have concerns. It, it should be, and it has been over many years, the jewel in Bromley's cultural crown. And obviously we've got concerns about the neglect that is referred to in 3.36 and 3.37. But we accept we are where we are. And Councillor Ireland and I have 
were proud recently to meet the team, uh, the Trafalgar team that run the Churchill, and we look forward to working with them in the future. Thank you. Thank you. I will now take this to the vote. This is a vote on the amendment, please. So those in favour of the amendment. Those against the amendment. OK, the amendment is lost. We will now take a vote. Oh, no, I have to give you right to reply on the original motion, if you would like. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think it's all been said. And then if anybody wishes to speak on the original motion. Huh? You wish to speak on the original motion? Thank you, Councillor Kevin Kennedy Brooks. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I don't know. I, I just think in good faith, um, I think I think the leader has been talking about the big vision and has been quite genuine this evening. I would uh, may restrict that to him at the moment. Um, I think that what you said was was something that I think of real value and people reading that within uh, that line added to uh, yourself would be, I think, I think they would feel quite um, supported by that. So would, I was just going to ask, not really as a formal amendment or whatever, but <laughs> the, um, the sort of the dedication you made, would you be happy for that to be inserted into the report? Sorry, Madam Mayor, I, I genuinely thank uh, Councillor Kennedy Brooks for those generous comments. I didn't hear the, the very last word, was the only one I missed, though. Report. Um, so generally what you, were, what you were saying as a commitment, um, it's not an official amendment, but would you be happy to have that within? Absolutely, your... it should be included in the minutes. Um, I, don't, I don't mind being quoted on it, um, and I'm sure I'll be held to account for it if this comes to fruition and were, just were, we have to fail it, um, which we won't under my leadership, certainly. Thank you. That will be captured in the minutes. Um, Councillor Gill, you wish to speak on the original motion? Yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as the group, uh, Labour group put forward the amendment outlining the points that we felt needed to be included uh, and addressed as part of this strategy, that amendment was, was clearly lost. Um, and that is unfortunate from our perspective as we don't think there was anything that was in there that was on uh, sort of impossible to agree or that would have added to the cost in any way. Uh, we felt that it was important that those principles be outlined and considered. Um, and the reality is we feel that the speed of this review, uh, albeit that as a result of the council's contractors, we had problems with property valuations um, and we understand that COVID and other things have been priorities. Given that this review has been four years in the making, uh, the short space of time uh, that was allowed for scrutiny of the reports, the lack of engagement and consultation with the affected um, tenants and the lack of the equality impact assessment uh, and even the lack of engagement with some of the council's own staff, um, we are not prepared to support uh, the strategy as it is. Councillor Smith refers to the, the big picture uh, and I think this probably is one where we each have genuine and, and optimistic views of what, how we would deliver services um, and the picture on how we we do that under what are absolutely unprecedented cost pressures. Um, and I think this is an occasion where our view on what this looks like and what the council's future looks like is clearly different to, to the majority parties. And I think that, that is fair enough. And, and um, on an occasion, we won't agree with these things. We obviously, um, support the idea of maintaining the highest possible services as we can um, but we think the means that the council services are pursuing to try and achieve this are, are not uh, are not the approach we would have taken and so whilst many of the actions probably would have been the same um, the approach we would have taken this with this review and probably some of uh, the outcomes at least um, would have been very different under a Labour administration. Um, and so for that reason, we will be voting against um, the report's recommendation.
unless you would, would you like to reply or shall we go to the vote? Madam Mayor, let's go to the vote. Thank you. So, the original motion, those in favour, please share. And those against, thank you. The original, original motion is carried. Item nine is to consider the recommendations from the Audit and Risk Management Committee on its membership. Councillor Michael Tetner to rec make the recommendations. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I so move. Um, the first recommendation is for us to allow in the Constitution the two independent members to be appointed to the Audit and Risk Management Committee. Um, we feel that if we have uh, accountants or people with financial expertise joining uh, on a voluntary basis the audit committee but that will be a huge benefit for everyone on the committee um, i've good experience of independent members on the standards committee where they play a crucial role in in analyzing complaints that the council has received and uh, again they're, they're very experienced and expertise so um, i do recommend that um, I would mention that there's no cost involved in having these independent members. We're not offering to pay them any expenses or anything, very mean. And uh, so no costs, only, only the benefit to the committee of more expertise. They will also have no vote. So I do uh, move that. And also the second part is to recommend uh, a new member to the committee who I very much will welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And it to be seconded by Councillor uh, Robert Evans. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I so second and reserve my right to speak. Thank you. And Councillor Gill, you wish to speak? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just to say that we fully support the recommendations, as we did at the committee. Um, the importance of independent members in terms of adding to our risk management oversight and scrutiny um, cannot be uh, sort of questioned, I think. Um, and as Councillor um, the council, whose name I can't think of, think that, there we are, <laughs> oh dear. as council took the quite rightly says, uh, there is no cost involved um, and there is only benefit to this council. Yeah. So uh, happy to, on this occasion, fully agree with council to comments, as rare as that is. No one else wishes to speak? Excellent. I'll now put this to the vote. Those in favour, please show. Excellent. Those against? It's carried. Item 10 is, am I in the right place? Yes, item 10 is to uh, receive the Local Pensions Board Annual Report. Councillor Keith Onslow to move the recommendations. Thank you, Madam Mayor, I so move. Councillor Kira Gabbert to second. Thank you, Madam Mayor, I'm very happy to second, thank you. It's now open for debate. Can't see anyone, in which case we will put this to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. We have two motions tonight. Um, the first motion is from Councillor Chloe Jane Ross to move, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm very pleased to be bringing my first motion to Council. Um, every one of us in this chamber knows someone that struggles with technology. It may be because they don't have a device readily available or the dexterity to use it, or they find some apps and websites hard to understand and navigate. Luckily, they have us on hand to help them most of the time. Some people don't have people to help, and often these are the same people that need to access more services than most. We all have an obligation to ensure everyone can access local services. The one good thing about COVID is that it reduced the digital divide. So many more people got online and got used to digital services, from Zooming their grandkids to reporting a missed refuse collection on our website. But in some ways, this has made it worse for people that cannot use digital services, as there is now a presumption that most people can. I pause here to champion digital services. 
they have been revolutionary. Take Fix My Street. No way could a non-digital system be as effective. It's been brilliant for the council, our contractors, our residents, and it's improved the public realm. This motion is not about curtailing digital services. We should be going full throttle on high quality digital services. And we should be doing what we can to get people to use them and advocating projects that improve digital inclusion. But for those that cannot access services digitally, we must have an alternative. If, Bromley, if Bromley's libraries introduce an online form for requesting books from other libraries, brilliant. People can use it from their house 24 hours a day. But for the people that can't, they need to know they can go to their library and request it in person. If we remove a cash uh, car parking meter and it turns out it's being used by a daycare centre and many of the patrons are finding it difficult to access parking digitally, we look for another solution. You know, maybe they could have those scratch off cards that like we give residents available from the centre. This motion is not about changing decisions that have gone. It's about identifying where digital exclusion might be occurring and finding ways to help. It's about considering digital inclusion and exclusion when we make decisions. And it's about making reasonable and proportionate allowances. It's about encouraging more residents to use council and contractor digital services, but always having an offline options for those that genuinely can't. Other councils have digital exclusion, digital inclusion, or even digital divide strategies and policies. We can leverage off those to create our own. Let's find out who in Bromley are digitally excluded and help. Let's have a digital exclusion champion to shine a light on reducing the digital divide in Bromley. I'd like to finish with this sentiment. Finding ways to allow our residents to participate, live independently and not be isolated, digital or otherwise, is a name I know that we all share. This motion is another string in our bow in achieving that. It's not a costly proposal, but one that directs our consideration of access to digital services. <coughs> I hope you can all support this motion and its intended aims, and I so do move. Thank you. Councillor Julie Ireland, would you, do you wish to second? I second and reserve the right to comment. Thank you. Thank you. The motion is now open for debate. Do any members wish to speak? Thompson. Councillor Bennett, I saw you first, or somebody over here? Thompson. Councillor Thompson first. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank Councillor Ross and Councillor Ryland for bringing this motion forward. Um, it is an area that I support. Uh, in regards to the motion itself, I'm behind the core crux of it. However, I think there is some room to strengthen it slightly. Uh, digital exclusion is an area that I currently work within. Um, so I'm a strategist on the campaign that recently hit the benchmark of lifting a million people out of digital poverty. Um, outside of my day job and more of my councillor capacity, uh, I work with a much more localised organisation, uh, drawing attention and support to Clear Community Web. They're a South East London organisation that looks to tackle these very issues um, through digital education and who have close working relationships with other local authorities. So. With that in mind, I would like to propose uh, an amendment in the form of adding that the council calls for uh, and then saying an exploration of potential partnerships with major telecoms networks and local digital education providers. And also that the council calls for a study into learnings from other local authorities that we can embrace um, in the third section of this motion. Secondly, I would propose where it references the creation of a digital inclusion strategy that we add, uh, this would be developed with input and guidance from these partnerships. By adding these two amendments, we're building in uh, a partnership model, which ultimately lessens the load on council officers, it reduces any incurred costs, and ultimately strengthens the end strategy and output through collaboration with private businesses with CSR uh, commitments, the voluntary sector, and also potentially other local authorities. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Do you have somebody to second your amendment? Councillor Geo? Madam Mayor, I second and reserve the right to speak. I think you need to speak to Tasnim now for this amendment. Okay. 
to be read out after it's been agreed, please. It would be most handy if we had these amendments beforehand, just mentioning it. Thank you. I don't know, just a point of order, that sounds like a point that you could refer to the uh, Constitution Improvement Working Group. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Gill. So we need to know what the amendment is before people start debating the amendment. I'm reliably informed. Uh, count, Councillor Mark Smith. I'll just make one, one point. Did you want to make an amendment on an amendment? No, no, no. no oh, that's jolly good. <laughs> no, no. My, my, my point is very simple. If a Labour group wants us to support amendments, it would actually be very useful if they could actually circulate them, circulate yeah. them in writing beforehand so we had a chance to read them. I just made that point. But thank you very much for backing me up. Get that Excellent. Going. Yeah. Councillor Colin Smith, you don't have an amendment to an amendment, do you? Uh, or an amendment no. to an amendment, amendment either, Madam Mayor. Amendment, it's a, a, I think it's an informative to colleagues around the chamber. <clears throat> Not unsympathetic to much of what's on here. What Councillor Thompson had to say was far from uninteresting as well. <clears throat> I'm of the view this probably needs to go to the relevant committee to look at it in fleshed out detail rather than just call someone a champion and we'll go away and we've got a digital <laughs> champion. What are they going to do with it? I think we need to understand what it is we're trying to do, not least, and I will return to the theme. Um, we haven't got any money for this type of stuff and we need to source, I think, where best to get maximum output for what we're trying to do. I totally, totally agree. Um, digital exclusion isn't what any of us want. Uh, let's continue to try and limit it to the max, but I will, I think, in fact, I'm almost certain I will be recommending to colleagues we send this to committee for further investigation, not least with another uh, motion to follow. Thank you, Councillor Smith. I am now advised that Councillor Thompson needs to read out the amendment. Thank you, Madam. And then there will be a day. We have you, you'll have your name down, Councillor Slater. Thank you. In the third section underneath, Council therefore calls for, uh, I propose adding an exploration of potential partnerships with major telecoms networks and local digital education providers. And also below that, a study into learnings from other local authorities that we could embrace. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Slater, you wish to speak? Um, yeah, does Councillor Thompson need to make a formal declaration of interest if he works with such an organisation? He's then asking to add to amendment that we do exploratory work with. We're advised all is well. Does anybody else wish to speak on this amendment? Madam Mayor, I was simply uh, discussing with uh, the monitoring officer as to which committee Councillor Smith was proposing this goes to. Um, I believe you were proposing Executive and Resources PDS. Um, I think that sounds logical. Um, I, I'm open to suggestions on committee. I would have thought it would either be that or possibly GPNL, but I'm a, I would be advised by the uh, Chief Legal Officer. Right. Does anybody want this job this evening? <laughs> no? Okay. Right, we are now going to vote on the amendment by Councillor Thompson. Are we clear? Excellent. Those for the amendment, please show. Those against the amendment? Okay, so the amendment didn't pass. Failed, in fact, is the word I'm going to give them. Thank you. We're now going back to the original motion from Councillor Ross. Would anybody like to speak? Oh, Councillor Bennett, you did indicate earlier. You'd like to speak on the original motion. Madam Mayor, I'd like to move with Councillor Smith's support that this matter be referred to the appropriate committee for them to investigate it. 
because it does involve cost and we are trying at every move to save money in the council. And uh, I'm always reminded of Groucho Marx in Duck Soup when he's being uh, asked about the war budget. And uh, he says, I can't make head or tail of this. And someone said, a child of three could understand it. He said, go out and get me a child of three. And that is how new technology now is. My late brother could not program his digital recording machine. He used to sit there and wait for the time the program started and press it. He didn't ask his kids to do it for him. So there is, there is a, a difference between people who've got the skill and those who haven't. Um, but one of the things I've found very interesting in my 16 years on the council is if anybody has had a problem, the council officers have always been willing to help solve that problem. Serve so CAB, serve our local libraries, serve a host of voluntary organisations. So there is a lot of help out there. But clearly, this is something we can debate at the committee. But it does come with cost consequences. And I don't think we can just pass a motion like this without knowing what the cost is going to be. Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Um, Councillor Kevin Kennedy Brooks would like to speak on the original motion. Um, important issues. So if it is going to um, a committee, um, I know obviously you talk, talking about costs, but this is potentially something that's uh, again one of those long-term cost-saving measures because um, age, uh, age of Cave did a, uh, a report to think that said by, by the time of um, the next local election, 2026, the uh, percentage of uh, people over 65 in King Bromley's uh, likely to hit uh, 19 to 20 percent. So that's one in five uh, people. And while I would not say that um, um, any person um, above that has no digital expertise, indeed, many will have far more than I do. Um, but um, I also have um, a lot of knowledge of people who do struggle and uh, struggle with um, uh, using, you know, they will, they'll buy a lovely, fantastic smartphone and then only be able to, to, to feel confident um, in, in using it as a phone. So I think it's really important that we work really hard towards enabling people to use um, uh, a digital service because, as has been said, um, it makes things so much more quicker, accessible, fix my feet, as was mentioned. But until we get there, until we get there, it's important to remember there are still people who who cannot be just left left to the side, um, um, and we do need to make sure that all our residents are included, are, do feel equal, um, and so I hope all of that is considered um, if this is going to uh, a committee. Thank you, Councillor. Now, we return to Councillor Julie Ireland for her right to reply. Thank you. Um, the Lib Dem group would be happy for this to go to committee um, on condition that it's not swallowed up and lost. So we'd quite like a date for it to come back to full council on that basis. Um, we're very, very grateful for the support. Um, Councillor Thompson, I think there's an excellent um, uh, uh, contribution I mean, we're very aware that it's not just inability, it's also poverty. Um, and sometimes it's um, just um, sheer bloody mindedness that makes people not use digital services. But it's a significant number. And in theory, it should be a cost saving to the council, not an actual cost in itself. The more people who use digital services, the more efficient those services are to deliver. So we'd um, accept that this being bounced back to um, a committee, I presume ERC, um, on condition that it would come back to full council um, within an agreed time scale. Thank you. OK, uh, Councillor Dunbar, I'm sorry, I missed. I think you wanted to speak on the issue. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <laughs> um, in our ward, we fully recognise that there is uh, a digital exemption for people and we do fully support that there should be uh, a digital exclusion champion providing that there is no additional cost to that. I find myself agreeing with Councillor Bennett and Councillor Ireland at the same time which is rather odd 
because it should be at PDS and it should be put in the work program. So we do offer our support for the digital exclusion program, but on those grounds also. Thank you. Thank you. So, Councillor Ross, you have the final uh, right to reply. Um, I just want to say thank you um, for all the support from the Chamber. Obviously, I loved you to all vote for the motion today, but I'm pleased that it will go to committee and we'll get an outcome and we'll be able to do something in this space. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we still nevertheless have to take this to vote on the original motion. Those in favour, please show. Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. So now we're going to move the amendment for it to go to committee. Okay. We don't need to debate that, do we? No. Okay. Please not sort of debate the number of that amendment. But so we'll go for the vote on the amendment for it to go to committee. That's what we'll vote on. Those in favour, please. Excellent. And those against? So, Councillor. Kennedy Brooks, we're voting on the amendment for it to go to a committee. Madam, Madam Mayor, we are abstaining on the... We're abstaining. OK, yeah. I was just making sure that that was clear. OK, so that is carried to go to committee. Excellent. I've got to get to my gap. I've got to get some thrills out of this, haven't I? Right, OK. So now we're going to go to the original motion. No, we're not. It's gone. No, it's carried. It's gone. It's gone to committee. So we're done, aren't we? We're done. Right. You'll be delighted to hear we have a second motion. It'd be nice to know if we've got any amendments to those motions. Is that motion quite soon? So we can we can go. You know what? We do have we do have drinks and snacks after this meeting. Just I just mentioned that if that speeds things up slightly. Right. Okay. So the second motion, in all seriousness, is important. And we go to Councillor Tony McParland. Um, would you like to move the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I'm happy to propose this motion. Nearly 20,000 people in Bromley live in housing association properties. Many of them have a good relationship with their landlord, working through problems together to ensure they live in a safe and happy environment. This isn't, however, the case for everyone. Now, you probably don't need me to tell you that. I would imagine that complaints and issues from housing association tenants is something that all of us see in our inboxes. The frustrations and difficulties we've had in trying to resolve these issues is actually one of the things that unites all of us in this chamber. And it's because of that that the Labour Group have brought forward this motion. I understand that in terms of getting housing associations to do anything, our powers are quite limited. That is why this motion has been worded quite carefully. We're simply asking for a few things. Firstly, by establishing a regular forum with housing associations, tenants and other members of the public, we could achieve far more than we're able to by exchanging hundreds of emails. We couldn't force anyone to attend, but we believe that if housing associations did attend, it would send a positive message about their willingness to engage. We all get a lot from meetings such as the Public Transport Liaison Group. This motion proposes setting up something similar with housing associations. We're also asking for a dedicated contact or contacts at each housing association and to work towards some commitments for responding to and resolving inquiries. Again, we can't force housing associations to accept these requests, but this motion does provide a framework and a way forward. Following the tragic death of Awab Ishap, we've seen the devastating impact that unsafe living conditions can have. Nobody in this chamber want something similar to happen to anyone in Bromley. I do, however, have concerns that if we don't act, something similar could happen. I'm dealing with one particular difficult case in my ward where damp and mould in one property left a vulnerable resident in hospital. We've deliberately tried to make this a non-political motion and we do understand that our powers are limited. This isn't the first time we've spoken about the difficulties that this motion tries to address, but I do believe there is genuine desire amongst members to try and improve outcomes for housing association tenants. But we have to try and do something before it's too late. This motion is an attempt to do just that, and I urge all of you to vote for it. Then, as a united council, 
we can work with local housing associations to improve the service provided to all of our residents. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe Councillor Cathy Bounce is going to second. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I support this motion and I believe it's a much needed motion um, because housing associations are failing too many of their residents and not being held accountable. We councillors take on cases that have been ongoing or in limbo, limbo for many months and sometimes years and three examples of my casework. And we probably have more casework in our ward um, than most of, of the opposite side of the chamber. Um, a block with broken security lights for almost four years. Residents moved out of their homes after I feel, filmed the resident walking on water instead of their bedsit carpet. Another family with three children moved out after I photographed the appalling conditions their home was left in after electrical works had been do done um, when the neighbour above them's flat flooded theirs. These residents had tried to work with their housing associations but had been ignored. They couldn't even contact them by email, telephone or online as they suggested they do. Um, Bromley Council has a councillor representative on the outside body of our largest housing association, Landlord. Yet we see no proactive or reactive input or reports linked to this role. And I still don't understand after all these years what the purpose of that role is. This motion would mean the council could liaise and offer a voice and support for our residents. It would be an active role, but it doesn't mean a new person. My ward has a very high number of residents living in housing association homes, and far too many of their homes are in poor conditions and some are appalling conditions. Residents have to wait at least 10 days in most cases just to get an acknowledgement for their communication. Then they wait for a nominal response from their housing association, and that's not efficient. The data breach from one housing association meant many residents were left in limbo for months. No telephones answered, no way of contacting the housing association, and some not even able to pay their rents. Then getting letters of eviction for outstanding arrears. I used to attend a homelessness forum here in the Civic Centre and always in attendance were officers from all of our housing associations and other interested third parties. So it's not difficult to implement such a forum again, which would have a positive outcome for some of the most difficult cases of housing association neglect. At our request, Pension cater councillors have met regularly with the director of our largest housing association and they have listened to us and taken positive action in several long term cases which we had raised with them. This week, for one case, the resident who had lost his request for management transfer, in three years he lost two further appeals for that transfer. He then came to me and after involving his MP, he has now been offered the management transfer he so rightly deserved. A breakdown in communication at the housing office meant they did not have all the relevant facts of his case when the housing association considered the outcome. As I said earlier, 10 days for an acknowledgement is not what residents deserve and reducing the acknowledgement date to two days should be simple enough and not costly. This motion would benefit all of Bromley's housing association residents and lead to better upkeep of the housing stock, which is in such a demand here. I support this motion. Thank you. The motion is now open for debate. Do any members wish to speak? Councillor Slater. Hi there. As a Conservative councillor for St Mary Craig Ward, <coughs> the most populous ward in the borough, and also one with one of the largest housing association populations, I uh, just wanted to ask uh, Councillor Bance, has she ever contacted the Clarion Housing Rep at all? 
Sorry, what have I contacted? Uh, earlier on, you referenced the council's clarion representative. I was just wondering if you'd ever contacted them instead of a stand in there, grandstanding and virtue signaling. Yes, and, I, and I've asked a question at full council, thank you very much. And as I said, after contacting them and speaking and asking about the role at this full council meeting, I still don't understand it. Or I don't I understand. At all. I think you're very rude, and I think that's a point of order. Thank you. Councillor Yvonne there. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you as portfolio holder. I, I feel I should respond here. So thank you for this motion. Bromley Council has always taken the quality of social housing extremely seriously within the borough, as the link with well-being is very well proven. We have not waited for a tragedy to occur before taking action. <clears throat> And I summarise below the initiatives already in place to ensure that any problems identified can be swiftly addressed. Details of all housing associations in the borough are listed on our website, and we've asked Bromley Federation of Housing Associations to keep this up to date every year. There are dedicated in contacts in place for councillors detailed in the contact list di distributed by our chief executive, and again, we've asked Bromley Ferry to uh, refresh this and disseminate annually. If any members experience difficulties contacting any housing associations, the housing team will be happy to assist. The Bromley Federation of Housing Associations meets regularly, attended by the council and all housing association representatives. This is not a public meeting, but anyone can raise an issue for discussion. Whilst we facilitate, a, um, we could facilitate a separate meeting, we have no jurisdiction over housing associations, associations and could not compel them to attend. It would also not be appropriate to discuss individual issues and cases in a public meeting and housing associ associations would be unlikely to discuss specific issues with other providers present. The housing associations all hold resident meetings at which residents can raise issues. Both the chief executive, myself, and the uh, director of housing hold, um, attend meeting, regular meetings with the housing associations. The chief executive and myself meet quarterly. The director and ADs hold a monthly operational meeting. If any councillors have issues they wish us to raise specifically at these meetings, please let us know and we will pick them up and take them forward. The key housing associations have also regularly attended the PDS and are available for scrutiny through this forum. So they can be requested to attend again, should you wish. Housing association response times to queries are in line with published corporate response times. There are independent bodies, most of whom work on a national basis, and we do not have the jurisdiction or contracts with them, so we cannot dictate different arrangements specifically for Bromley. It's also worth noting that housing associations are subject to the housing regulator and must comply with standards and assessments to maintain regulation, the results of which are published. When tenants do have concerns, they may also call upon the housing ombudsman for an independent investigation to resolve the matter. The social housing regulator has written to all housing associations asking for details of their actions in response to the recent case law rule regarding damp and mould. The director of housing planning and regeneration has also written to the housing associations and the temporary accommodation providers operating locally, asking for copies of their response and reassurance of the actions being taken locally to ensure that all properties meet lettable standards and are well maintained. As most of the items raised in the motion have therefore either already been addressed or cannot be practically enforced, the motion is not considered necessary and I move that it is rejected. Thank you. Councillor Jill, you wish to speak? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just first like to respond to Councillor Slater. Um, 
I have never heard anybody uh, refer to Councillor Bantz as grandstanding and virtue signalling. Um, and in is it 20, 12 years or is it 16 13. years? 13 years as a councillor. Uh, I am not aware of any other councillor who does as much casework and uh, supports as many residents as Councillor Bantz does. Um, and the concerns that she has raised and the cases that she has mentioned in this meeting, which Councillor Slater appears to have barely listened to, uh, at least if he can possibly think that Councillor Bantz is in any way other than sincere and uh, speaking on behalf of residents. And I really would ask that he withdraws those comments because I, I think they are outrageously uh, ill-advised and undeserved. Um, moving on to this motion, I would absolutely suggest that all, uh, all councillors read the uh, coroner's report into the death of Awad Ishak. And the reality here, uh, and we talked a couple of meetings ago about the impact of air pollution, and I think one of the uh, councillors on the Conservative Party suggested these were not, uh, there were no deaths being attributed to air pollution uh, on death certificates. Well, here we have an example where death is being caused by the mould and damp created in appalling conditions in social housing and nothing is being done. And the reality is the family first reported the mould before our Ishak was even born. They requested to be rehoused a year before he died and the Housing Association did nothing. And at the time that of his death, no treatment had been undertaken for the mould. When they initially reported it, they were told that they should paint over it and not even told that they had to use a special type of paint. The Housing Association did so little to address their problem, and despite years and years of complaints and reports being made that has resulted in this child's death. Now, this is unlikely to be the first death due to mould and damp in a Housing Association property, but it is the first time that it's been recorded on a death certificate. Um, and there is a moment here, I think, where housing associations will start to take action. And we as this council have a responsibility to do everything we can to ensure that they do take action and that they don't slip back into grandstanding and virtue signaling and making sort of noises about doing things, but not actually doing anything about the, the appalling conditions that some of our residents are in. And we know that they are appalling. We, we've all, I suspect, seen the damp in some of these properties. Um, these are buildings that are 40, 50 year olds. And to compare to Councillor Smith's point, yes, housing associations have these old buildings. Yes, the cost of repairs uh, has spiralled. But in difference to the council situation, this is literally a life and death matter if they don't put in the money and they don't do these repairs. And we as councillors, yes, we don't have formal legal responsibility uh, to be able to compel them to do anything. This is not, this is not what this motion is asking for. We are asking for a public forum where residents and councillors can raise these issues and ask housing associations to come along and explain what action they're taking or why they aren't. And actually, I think, particularly the largest housing associations in the borough, which are also the ones which tend to have the most problems and the most old housing, particularly Clarion, let's be honest, and this is mainly housing, associate, housing that has been transferred uh, from Bromley Council when we sold off the stock uh, to the Housing Association. So we do have a level of responsibility, even if uh, it's not a legal one and it's not a formal one. But actually, it's that public shaming, let's say, but also public applause for the Housing Associations that are doing this, that are getting it right. Um, and as Council Vance quite rightly mentioned, we have actually, in the past year or so, had a much more positive response from Clarion when we raise issues with them than we ever have before. Um, and actually, one of the biggest problems to, to respond to Councillor Bear's point is we have a contact email address that councillors are asked to send cases to. Not a person, but an email address. And actually, since we have had that meeting with Susan Clinton, a named person who we've sat face to face and discussed open issues, we have seen a massive difference in the level of responsiveness that we have uh, uh, had from Clarion. But the point is that every single ward councillor in every ward shouldn't have to keep going to every housing association 
and say, can we have a meeting? Can we to, to, to raise cases that these housing associations have responsibilities to their tenants and to their residents to be solving? But actually, we as councillors are almost the only ones left to do this work. And if we're not prepared to even try public meetings to try and get action on some of these issues, then what exactly are we doing to prevent these deaths? What action are we taking? And I know Councillor Bear's point that she and the head of department meet with the chief executives, but the chief executive is way too high up the organisation to be knowing the details of these cases. And the point is that the residents aren't seeing these meetings. They're not hearing what's discussed. They're not hearing what action the Housing Association is promising. What we need is public attention on these issues. There's a very good social housing campaigner who uses YouTube videos of these properties to essentially prompt action for housing associations. If one social media influencer can get action from housing associations, shouldn't this council be able to do so as well? Um, we don't see any particular reason to reject these, uh, th this motion. We don't think that the, in recent uh, years, we have seen the action that would suggest that these actions are already being undertaken. And the sheer number of cases uh, that our residents report to us suggests that this still is a very pressing issue. Um, we are facing a cold Christmas where many residents are not able to heat their homes due to the increased cost of energy. The damp and mould is only going to get worse. Do we really want to wait for another child to die as a result of the conditions of their housing association property until we take action? So we in the Labour group would ask colleagues across the chamber to support this motion and to do what we can to help our residents in these terrible conditions. Thank you. So next, I see Kevin uh, Kennedy, Councillor Kevin Kennedy Brooks requested to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, yeah, before I start, if I could echo uh, Councillor Deal's comments. Um, I've worked for um, nine years now, I think. Nine, nine years with Councillor Bance, and I have to say, I think her work is exemplary. Um, it is a, a full time job for her, and I have unbelievable respect for the work she does. And I actually believe that the majority of the chamber is. Um, and Councillor Slater, you really should look at yourself and I think your colleagues would also uh, want you to take those words back. Um, on, this, on the actual uh, motion itself, um, I just wanted to say that the housing in, in our ward, it's almost as if like it would make, it would be easier to report if there was housing which was good it's that much of an issue if we phone you up one day and say, oh, yeah, this flat, yeah, that's a good one. So just thought I'd let you know. The, the work that would in, involve for every individual one that we see um, is, is, is really something that is almost impossible to do. And while I understand that we are not, um, we, we don't have any legal rights or anything like that to actually... Uh, get the housing associations to change. Housing associations still want to come to Bromley and they still want to put planning applications in. And they, that makes them a lot of money. So I feel that um, we should be able to have a forum where we, without maybe able to tell them, um, you know, because we can't, fair enough, but um, stronger urging about how they need to support residents because people are living in places which especially increasingly now over Christmas where they're not going to heat them either is really terrible and you know to a certain extent all of us around here we're lucky we have that and I don't think this motion is a hugely political thing where we need to be divided on it all we're doing is trying to put as much urging exertion as possible to make sure that housing associations understand their own obligations and their own responsibilities and understand that if they want to build in the future in Bromley because an application is is um, being looked at in our world at the moment with uh, the same housing uh, one of the same um, housing organizations 
And we should be saying, if you want to continue to build an up borough and continue to provide our housing, you need to provide um, a decent standard of living for the residents. Um, it seems to me, as I say, something that is really not a lot political because I know every member here wants the best for their residents and wants their residents to live in acceptable, you know, we're not saying fantastic or, you know, high, high level, we're saying acceptable. And so um, I'll, just a few thoughts there I'd thought I'd put. Thank you. Um, Councillor Smith, you indicated you wish to speak. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, may I start by um, seconding uh, Councillor Beer's um, amendment, if I may. Um, if I may mention briefly uh, the words of the Conservative Councillor around ULES and air quality and deaths caused by it were actually relayed from the Bromley's Director of Public Health. Um, it's a fact that there are no death certificates with death by air quality on it. Um, to whatever degree um, there are elements of it, I'm, I'm sure we'll be discussing uh, in, in a couple of months' time in another place on a, a subject matter close to all of our hearts. Um, <clears throat> would say to Councillor, um, can it take, still take me a while to get used to that one, Kevin. So um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if as a planning authority we can make uh, conditional uh, threats to building uh, to building uh, to housing associations that you won't get permission unless you do X, Y, Z. So I think it's governed by a different set of rules. Um, look, I think we all agree with what you're saying, and I think this is a question of tactics. Um, you appear to want a forum to call them out in public and give them a good bashing. And to some extent, I can understand that. I don't, I can't imagine there was a lead for housing or a local authority in the leader in the country <clears throat> that didn't gulp when they heard about that death. Um, no one's immune to that, it can happen anywhere. We, we've all had cases in our ward where <clears throat> people have been found to be living in awful conditions and putting it right is everything. <clears throat> One thing, the reason that really I can't support this, having heard, as you have, that virtually everything on here is being done all but this forum to call people out and uh, give them a bit of a shooing as much as they possibly deserve it on occasions, is we need these guys more than they need us. <clears throat> if they take our nomination rights away, then there has been a smaller housing association for a while when we pressed them too hard on something took our nomination uh, rights away <clears throat> these people can house people from anywhere they want so just because it makes us um, feel a bit better in ourselves that we've shown our residents we're going to the absolute max for them doesn't necessarily have the desired effect <clears throat> I liked what you said about your meeting with the chief exec of one of our larger housing associations. I think that's the way to pursue it. And I think if the leaders of the three, four, perhaps if um, colleagues, uh, five, depending on how many colleagues want to be involved, the way to go about this is if we possibly consider compiling a central borough-wide register of members' involvement in these cases where things are sticking, because we've all had them, and if we can take that forward with a body from the various housing associations, perhaps over and above what we're hearing is already going on, so that you can say, uh, Councillor Bance, this guy's been waiting for 14 months to get this fixed. All of a sudden, everyone in the council, everyone in the housing association, is cited. Those cases should be being picked off months, months and months before they actually are. But calling people out, there's a place for it. I'm personally not convinced this is it. I think tactically we can get where we want to go easier and faster by just being a little bit more diplomatic, a bit tactical, particularly since the Govian comments of a couple of weeks ago, however long it was. <clears throat> He's clearly up for this. He means business. Finally, to fix that note around heating homes, it, is it a question of heating homes? Potentially, is it a case of heating homes too much? 
going to be an awful lot of people this winter don't open their windows to keep the heat in. And that's one of the main causes of mould, because they're not getting aeration through the house. So these things all eat on each other. There's no absolutes about this. So I say, let's not throw, throw one out there in public. Let's think how we're going to tackle this in public. And, and Councillor Jill, Labour colleagues, your recent meeting with one of our biggest housing associations, I think is in, you've done well. I, I wasn't aware of that. I think that might be a model all of us need to consider. And I say, if we've got a master sheet, perhaps oldest items first, let's work them off from the top. That ought to hopefully get us all we, where we want to go and be faster without hacking the housing associations off, losing our nomination rights, higher amount in TAs. That doesn't help any of us. So that's why I support the, the amendment, Madam Mayor. Yeah, Councillor Igo, I see all you next. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it must have been pre-COVID, but a few years ago I was sat in the public gallery, as I always did, and I actually came and watched a committee um, portfolio. Um, sorry, Councillor Bear was in charge. She was the chairman. I take it, it was probably RRH. I can't quite remember. And you had actually Clarion come in and you had a, a session where you were asking them questions. What was really interesting for me that night was that there were many questions from the Conservatives and Labour. I mean, at that point, we only had Labour and Conservatives in, in the chamber. Um, and there were many members on, on the other side at the moment who were asking questions. I remember Councillor Harris saying that she was actually on the committee of the panel where sitting with Clarion, I think, or something, I'm not quite sure what you call it, and you were quite disappointed that you weren't able to have the input. That's, if I remember correctly, what you said. Um, so I think it's, I think everyone in this chamber has obviously got some concerns. Um, we're not bashing them. We're just trying to get um, some communication. Um, and also, secondly, I'd like to ask Councillor Slater if he would please apologise. You are a new councillor, as am I, and I would never dream of saying that to anyone on the opposite side. So please consider um, apologising to my colleague, uh, Councillor Bounce, who has been a uh, councillor for an extremely long time. Thank you. Said it once again. Councillor Slater, you wish to speak? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I apologise to Councillor Bance if she feels upset by my comments. It wasn't meant to be that way. Um, but you did mention that the Clarion rep had been doing nothing. Um, I think you did say that. Uh, um, but actually, you're not the only ones that have been meeting with Susan Clinton. There are people on this side that are trying to hold the housing associations to task and work on behalf of residents to resolve these issues. Um, and I think that goes unacknowledged sometimes from your side as well. Councillor Marlowe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is an extremely important issue. And although, like the leader and the portfolio holder for RRH, I will be opposing the motion, I fully recognise the sentiments of um, Councillors Geel, McPartland and Councillor Bounce in what they say. But amidst these, this terrible individual case and the cases that the members opposite have raised, um, and for the reasons the leader has given, many of these items already covered in Councillor Bear's speech. I just want to recognise an example of success in this area, and that is in my own ward of Farnborough and Crofton, where we have the Keniston Housing Association, which is a relatively small development, um, but ward members meet with the management on a regular basis to discuss um, the initiatives they have to improve um, their estate, um, they have certain planning queries that clearly I won't get into the details of here, but they also raise with ward members. And so rather than a one size fits all solution of a, a forum when, you know, the requirements across the borough are quite different. I just urge all ward members to get in contact with social housing providers in their own ward, have regular meetings. And I think that's the best way to get the best outcomes for our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Owen, I saw you. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. One thing I'd like to draw attention to the Council, which has not been mentioned at all, there's a Social Housing Regulation Bill 2022-23, which was published on the 3rd of November this year, currently going through Parliament. So I think whatever, whatever else we choose to do, we should see what happens to this bill in Parliament, because it's crazy doing things if there's regulation already being undertaken in a higher house. 
Thank you. Councillor Grant. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to make a personal... I ask you, Stan. Oh, please. sorry. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to make a personal observation. Um, I've recently had some dealings with Clarion. Um, I found them really helpful, very responsive. Uh, it was really easy to make contact. If any member wants to contact the person, uh, just contact me and I'll email it out to you. Councillor Ireland. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> um, I remember when you started your term of office, you said to me you were going to make it as a personal mission to make sure we were courteous to each other. Um, and I think you should remind <clears throat> councillors later, as I remind my children, there's no but in sorry. Um, so I will move on from there. What I'd like to say is that the um, as new councillors, all five of the Lib Dem councillors, we inherited a lot of very intractable housing problems, um, as I think all new councillors do. Um, we found the housing offices to be amazing. Um, and I just want to say thank you to them because they have the hardest job. Um, and uh, we found them really supportive. Um, this is a really important issue. I know, and it's not political. All of us are against this all the time. Um, and I think anything that we can come up as a consensus, Councillor Smith has suggested a, perhaps a way forward with consensus on this that can in, in, um, improve the um, access of tenants to getting their problems solved. Um, some get solved really quickly, but some have just gone on for years and years. And the frustration you can hear in people desperately trying to get something to happen. If there's any way we could improve communication channels for the individual tenants, for councillors who are trying to help, then um, we would be completely um, in support of that. And it would be nice if we could find that consensus here today. But if that's not possible, then we would say thank you to Councillor McPartland and Councillor Vance. We would support your motion and thank you for bringing it. <clears throat> Councillor Botting, sorry, Councillor Barrow, I know you've asked to speak again, but you've already spoken once. Sorry. It's a point of order. If it's a point of order, you can clarify in a second. Uh, in a second, that's right. Councillor Botting's first. Thank you. OK. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I don't know if people are aware or realise that um, the Orpington Ward Safer Neighbourhood Panel um, Clarin attend, they regularly attend, and a lot of issues are raised there. Um, and I don't know if on your safe neighbor panels you could invite them along. Um, that might be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Botting. So, a point of order, Councillor Bear. Uh, not a point of order, just a point of clarification. You, you mentioned, uh, Councillor Jill, that we met with the Chief Executive. No, it's the Chief Executive and I that meet with the team from Clarion. And that includes quite a number of levels. It's not just their senior management. And interestingly, last time we talked about the need for named contacts in those parts where there is a high density of Clarion um, at housing. So I've been introduced to the person who's responsible for the estates in St Mary Cray, my ward, very close to my heart an awful lot of social housing in my ward. Um, these things can be facilitated. And the thing I just really wanted to pick up is if you've got really intractable problems that you've been trying to deal with that aren't being fixed, don't suffer in silence. Let us know, we'll raise it, and we'll make sure they do get fixed. Thank you, Councillor Bear. I think everybody has had a say. I will now take the most... So what am I doing? Oh, I'm going back, yes, of course. Honestly, I need that glass of wine. Um, OK, now we now go back to Councillor McParland to give your right of reply. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep this uh, brief, uh, Madam Mayor. And I thank the portfolio holder for her response and also for offering to pick up any particular cases which we need. I sincerely thank you for that. I mean, this motion was really about making sure that we've done all that we can in suggesting a few ways that we could do this. For example, things like name contacts have personally helped me speed up inquiries. We understand that we have no legal jurisdiction. And again, the motion actually reflects this. I don't believe that all the issues have been addressed. So I believe this motion is actually still relevant. Whilst there may be some calling out in meetings, the aim of this motion is to actually work with housing associations, not against. So I do take issue with some of the objections to this motion. 
projecting this, I think, is a bit of a missed opportunity, and that's unfortunate. We had a good opportunity to try and forge a way forward, perhaps show a little bit of leadership. So we're going to take this last minute opportunity to urge all members from across the chamber to vote for this motion, because this isn't um, like this is not going to resolve everything overnight. But it's hopefully going to start a process of making things just that little bit better for all of our residents, which is what everybody in this chamber surely wants. Thank you. Thank you. Apologies for not coming back to you. Now we go to the vote. Right. So all those in favour, please show. OK, and all those against, please show. OK, the motion is not carried. Right, before we get to part two, a little light interlude, I've got the Mayor's announcements. So I can give you those announcements and then we can go to part two. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank all my colleagues who attended the Copper Salon dinner, which raised money for Ukraine. It was a lovely evening and we raised an amazing £1,300 that night. The funds raised will go to the Rotary Club of Bromley that are liaising directly with the Rotary in Ukraine. So that was that was fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, the next thank you is to colleagues who um, represented the borough by attending all the various services at local churches for the memorials, um, laying wreaths, reading lessons. Um, and as your ward councillors, you also attended. So thank you so much. It's a national and local opportunity to remember the service and the sacrifice of those that have defended our freedoms and protected our way of life. And I thank you really most sincerely. Those of you that know me know how important that is to me. And uh, for those of you that attended the ball at Oakley House on the 19th of November, I'm delighted to say it was a fabulous evening. Those that you didn't that didn't attend, well, you missed a fabulous evening. Um, mm. And I'll be writing to everyone that did attend to tell you how much we raised that night. But we did raise a huge amount of money and it was a fantastic evening. Uh, the classic movie, movie theme concert was uh, a great success in the Great Hall. Another lovely evening, and I'm very grateful to the Lewis concert, Lewisham Concert Band who played for us there another fabulous evening. Um, I think a few of you did miss out again on another wonderful night. But fear not for those that didn't make the ball or the concert evening, not looking at anybody in particular, we have more. Um, there will be more events throughout the year. Um, on a more serious note, there is the Holocaust Memorial Day and there will be a service in the morning on Friday the 27th of January. Uh, more information will go out on that. So those of you that would like to attend, please do watch out for that information. Um, later on, on the 28th, after Burns Night, but there will be a whiskey tasting for those of you that like to dabble in the taste of whiskey. To celebrate Burns Night, um, places are limited and it will be held here uh, at the Civic Centre in the um, in the rooms that we'll be going to later. The Mayor's Quiz, yippee, I hear you shout. The Mayor's Quiz will be on Friday the 24th of February in the Crofton Halls. Um, so please look out for those. The invitations will go out shortly. And the annual Mayor of Bromley Awards will be take place in March. Um, and you'll be receiving letters shortly for your nominations. Uh, they're really important, and uh, the Mayor's Awards are very important to people that receive them. There will also be an additional category for the exceptional young volunteer for people under the age of 21. And I would appreciate you nominating because we do, it does help us reach out to the wonderful people in the borough. Finally, don't forget to buy your Spitfire tickets. You could win a flight in a Spitfire and it will raise some more money for the charity, for the Mayor's Charity Appeal. And finally, as I have alluded to already this evening, well, actually, I think I said it. I didn't even allude to it, did I? There will be drinks and snacks afterwards. You are very welcome. Um, and um, please do note we do have a superstar singing for us this evening as well. A little Christmas cheer will be will be vocalised, not looking anywhere in particular uh, this evening, after this evening's meeting. So do come and join. And uh, Councillor Bennett, you have something you wish to say. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I believe that this is the last meeting at which 
your attendant will be in place as your attendant. Is that correct? Uh, well, could I, as a past mayor, on behalf of all the past mayors and um, deputy mayors, say a big thank you to Neil Tully uh, for all the work he's done for the borough. Uh, he's kept us all in line with his instructions, which are work in progress. And uh, he's been a fantastic assistant to every mayor, I think, since 2017. So uh, I'm sure we'd all like to put our gratitude on the record. Thank you very much. Very well said, Councillor Bennett. Um, I now will announce that the live streaming, as much as everyone has thoroughly enjoyed it, I'm sure, um, will now be closed. There will no longer be any live streaming because we will be going to part two. So the final part of our meeting will need to be conducted in a closed session for the remaining two items on our agenda.